Welcome to today's SeafoodNews.com video, sponsored by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Good morning. The halibut issue in Alaska is shaping up to be one of the most difficult issues uh, that has been faced by the Alaska seafood industry uh, in 20 or 30 years. Uh, the problem is that there's a confluence of factors uh, that have made this a very, very difficult thing to resolve. The first factor is that halibut management has not normally been under uh, the U.S. laws and under Magnuson Act and the North Pacific Fisheries Council. Instead, it has been managed by the International Pacific Halibut Commission. And the Halibut Commission, although it has reputable scientists and makes a scientific forecast about what constitutes overfishing, uh, is not required by law to stay within that forecast. Uh, and so there's been some criticism that part of the problem is that the IPHC has allowed too much overfishing to occur. Uh, the second problem is that halibut isn't just supporting the directed fishery in Alaska. It's supporting all the other uh, major fisheries, uh, longline and trawl fisheries, which have to take some halibut bycatch as almost a precondition uh, to harvest their own species. And when people blithely throw up examples where other fisheries have substantially reduced their halibut bycatch, uh, they're not really comparing apples to apples. There is a significant bycatch reduction uh, in the BC uh, trawl fisheries, for example. But those fisheries are so small compared to the Alaska trawl fisheries that if you took the same ratio and applied it across the Alaska trawl fisheries, uh, the amount of halibut taken would be much larger than the current uh, current caps. Uh, the West Coast has also reduced their halibut trawl bycatch, but on the West Coast, the tr the fishing for uh, Dover sole, Petrali sole, and the other sort of groundfish species was severely constrained by uh, rockfish bycatch limits. So there wasn't a true apples to apples comparison. So what this makes me think is that in addressing this issue, it's going to be very important for all the different interests and different sides to be involved with it. And it cannot happen with sort of the I, uh, IPHC dictating to the council, they have to do this or the IPHC is going to do that. Uh, there's not going to be an easy short-term solution for this, and there's going to have to be flexibility on all sides. So it's going to become a real test of what happens in a management system when things get out of balance and out of whack. One of the key problems with halibut is arrowtooth flounder. And the arrowtooth flounder populations have grown so large, partly due to the uh, conservation harvest caps in the Bering Sea. But these arrowtooth flounder populations are competing with halibut. So what you have is a situation where the halibut are not growing as large as they used to and many male halibut are under the legal size limit. So this means the directed fishery is concentrating on the female halibut, which are larger, and are also the key to the reproductive health of the system. So there's a, a big ecological component in this as well, and it's not going to be solved uh, by people sticking to their traditional uh, self-interested positions. It's going to require uh, a new way of thinking about the entire Alaskan fisheries ecosystem to ultimately solve this halibut problem. In Lexington, Mass., this is John Sackton. Today's SeafoodNews.com video was brought to you by the Alaska Seafood Marketing Institute. Alaska has been protecting wild and sustainable seafood for generations and adheres to the most recognized and internationally accepted set of guidelines written by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization. For recipes and additional information, visit wildalaskaflavor.com.